I've entitled my message this morning, Come and Build with Us. God is doing some amazing things. There are lives being changed. There are people being added to this community. There are, there are people coming to faith, people being baptized, people being healed, people turning away from their past and the sin of the past and being transformed um, ongoingly. And uh, as River Life Church grows, it's absolutely important that we all know who we are and what we call to be and do. That thing has to be so clear. And so as people are added, we really have to be very clear on who we are and what we're called to do, because that is very specific. And um, so I want to give you just some pictures so that you can graph, so you can have a picture in your mind of who, answering that question, who are we? We are called to be a community. We are called to be a hospital. We are called to be an army. We are called to be a mighty tree of fruitfulness. Well, let me just unpack those. We are called to be a community. Psalm 68 verse 6 says, God sets the lonely in families. God puts people in families. When you're born again, when you put your faith in Jesus, it's not just you and Jesus. It's you, Jesus, and the church. You need to have a revelation of that. Because there are going to be times where the church, the other people God called, are going to be horrible. They're going to hurt you. As we used to say when we were kids, they're going to be foofy people. <laughs> that means that they're not nice. I think. <laughs> God has called us to be a community. God has called us to be an army. Ephesians 6, 10 to 20 talks about the armor of God. We see in Chronicles 12 the story about it describes the, the, the indebted, the distressed, the defectors, the, the discontented coming to David. And, and the Bible says they gathered and they kept coming and coming. All these people who are the, the, the mess-ups of society, they were the dropouts, they were the ones who weren't wanted, they were the ones who were indebted. All the problem child people came to David and the Bible says, and it was a mighty army of God. You called to be an army. You're called to be an hospital, a place of healing. We see this picture in Ezekiel and also uh, in Revelation where there's this incredible uh, uh, picture of a, of a river with trees and there's the, the leaves of uh, healing for the nations and fruit for the nations to eat. And a mighty tree. We are called to be a mighty tree. If, if you think of it like this, the leadership and the eldership, the leaders are like the trunk and the, all the people are like the branches that grow out all into society and there's leaves and fruit that people who don't know God can come and bump into your life and be impacted by you. That's what God is doing through you and I'm inviting you to come and build and be part of what God is already doing. You see, today is a call to build. <clears throat> you see, we live in a society that's broken and falling apart, a world that is unraveling. Our world doesn't have the ability to build community. They don't have the... Uh, the world doesn't have the... Uh, the skills and the ability to bring people together of all different types and, and kinds. They need you. This inability to lead, the world doesn't have an ability to lead unselfishly. It, it, it results in cyclical behavior of abuse and oppression again and again and again. That's, if you look at world history, that's what happens. A group come into power, they use and abuse. They get overthrown, they use and abuse. They get overthrown, they use and abuse. They become their own destructors. 
The world is broken. Unchecked greed. The world doesn't know how to put, put a harness on greed. Ethical moral, moral breakdown. Lack of integrity at every society level. Our world is falling apart. Lack of integrity. Uh, unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred that's not dealt with, dealt with carries on from generation to generation to generation. People hate just because their grandparents hated. Family brokenness, producer brokenness. <clears throat> that is also cyclical. So the problem is clear for us all to see. Our world is falling apart. And you, River Life Church, are the answer. The good news is that there's a king, and his name is Jesus. And he is able to heal, touch hearts, change communities, break poverty, bring life, bring hope, like we heard this morning. The good news is that you and I get to build a city within a city, like we saw in the Philippi story. God planted a new community inside a community, and they were different, almost opposite, and they became, they grew and grew and grew and influenced. And that's what I'm calling you. I want to give you some practical ways, very easy. Every single one of us in this room can be part of it and can do it well. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah. Dana's with me. <laughs> hmm. Number one. Now this um, I've just called a promise of, enlarge, of, of enlargement. God spoke to us about probably seven or eight years ago. He spoke, spoke to the eldership team. We shared it with the leaders in the church. On this Isaiah 54, verse 1 to 4. I'm going to read the first three verses. Let me read it to you and then I'll talk about it. Sing, O barren one who did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of of her who is married, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread abroad to the right and the left. And your offspring will possess nations. And will, will sorry. And your offspring will possess the nations. And will people, sorry. That must be wrong, eh? And possess desolate cities, I think it says. Right. Why stakes? Why do we have to lengthen our stakes and strengthen our courts? Because you're going to spread out. So God always requires, before growth, He always requires preparation for the growth. Alright? You see this um, if you, you see this in Genesis, when God created in Genesis 2, I think it's 5, it says, God did not let rain come to the earth because the trees were not to grow because there wasn't a man to tend it. So God would not let things grow yet because there wasn't anyone to tend it, cultivate it, take care of it. So God... God's way is he, want, he once looked after cultivated growth. And so that's why in this prophetic word, God, God is saying, you're going to increase, I'm going to expand you, you're going to stretch, stretch out, so make room, put the stakes, make your tent bigger so that you can accommodate it. And um, in order to keep what God gives us and to keep growing, the stakes and foundations must be able to cope and to accommodate the growth that God is wanting to, to bring. Paul says it like this in 2 Corinthians 10. But we will not boast beyond limits, but will boast only with regard to the, the area of influence God has assigned to us to reach even to you. For we are not overextending ourselves as though we, were, we did not reach you. For we were the first to come to you all the way to you, with the gospel of Christ. We do not boast beyond 
limit in the labors of others. But our hope is that your faith increases and our area of influence among you may increase and be enlarged so that we may preach the gospel in lands beyond you. So Paul is saying, if we don't look after what we've got, if we don't tend to what we've planted and what God has given us, we have no right to go further. <clears throat> and so that's why this morning I'm making an appeal that you come and you build alongside us. We are building a community, an army, a hospital, a tree of fruitfulness. <clears throat> and we, we, I want to I unpack some of those. What does it look like? What does the community look like? Everybody can build community. Literally having a conversation. It's literally st staying five minutes after any meeting or gathering that you're at and connecting with somebody you don't know. That's building. That's not higher grade. Even I can do that. <laughs> the way that God has called us to build is relationally. We're not like any other church where the relationships are superficial. That's not what we're building. We're building a community where the relationships can stand. And it's for purpose because God wants us to grow as individuals. And when we build authentic, real, tight relationships, when you build like that, then you grow. And then you are a light to other people who are in your life who don't know Jesus because they can't believe that you are not like you were last month, last year. They can't believe it. And the only way you grow is to engage with God and be with God's people. Build community. Jesus and me is not a recipe for growing. And that's why we're building like this. And it's so simple. It's literally one conversation. It's a phone call. It's a meal. It's a touch here. It's a how you're doing. And it's not just with church people and not just in church meetings. It's everywhere. God has called you to be a builder of community wherever you find yourself. Because relationships give influence. And that's what God wants to do. He wants you to be an influence. And it's not a pressured thing. All right. So some of the, some of the, the ways that we are building, no, uh, firstly, is little by little. How do we build? Little by little. Exodus 23, 30. Little by little I will drive them out before you until you have increased to possess the land. If there's no growth, then maybe you not, we're not ready and we're not cultivating the area that we've been given. You cry out for more, you cry out for increase, you cry out for, for more, but actually what you've got you haven't maintained. The same thing applies in every part of your life. You've been given 24 hours a day. What are you doing with it? Don't wish it away. Don't say that you're so busy and manage the time that you're given. Operate. Little by little, that's how we do it. On the little decisions. On the little things. We all trust God for the big and the speeding up and, and, and the miracles and the things that God wants to do. I'm not saying that we're not trusting God for that. But by and large, in our hearts, we've said, I'm going to be consistent. In the next 20 years, I'm going to build something. I'm going to build when it comes to family. I'm going to build when it comes to community around me. I'm going to build when it comes... In, in the business relationships, I find myself, I'm going to build consistently, little by little. And you look back, and it's amazing. We were at an a, a event uh, last night at, at, in Durban, uh, at, at a church called Glenridge. They were celebrating their 40 years. You know what's amazing? The relationships of people who they've planted, I think it's, it must be close to 40 churches, it's like a, it's like a church a year, out so a lot of people have gone through that church. In fact, there's probably 10 people here who were, who've been part of Glenridge Church at some point in their life. And what's amazing is that relationships are all intact. 
guys who have led the church and then moved on, guys who have come through the church and been sent out or have moved to other cities, the relationships are all intact. 40 years of relationships. And that's what I love about this church. That's how we've built. We've built slow, steady, little by little, but it's solid and it produces fruit. <clears throat> Proverbs 20:21. 20, an inheritance gained hastily in the beginning will not be blessed in the end. You see, there are no shortcuts. We have to go according to the standard of God's word. There's flashy ways to do church. There's quicker ways to grow a church than building relationally. Much quicker ways to do it. Um, but we are not interested in that. The reason why we're doing it the way we're doing it is because we have a conviction that that's what the Bible says. Nothing else. It's not so much slow and steady wins the race. It's more if you build right, it will stand. Slow and steady so sometimes does win the race, but it's not about that actually. It's actually about building right. Then you don't have to go back and fix it. And so little by little, you know, the beautiful thing is, like I said, every single one of us can be part of this building. It's not like a big pressure on you. Because actually what's happening is, like I said, is actually if you keep yourself in a good environment, in other words, your posture to God's Word is beautiful, the Holy Spirit's involved in your interaction with the Word, and you're in God's community, you're going to grow. You're going to be transformed. Every year you're going to be different than you were last year. And people who are in your life that don't know Jesus are going to be absolutely have their mind blown. Because they're going to watch how you do life, and they're going to come to you, and it's going to be attractive. And that's the thing. But unless, you see, it's not what I must now try and reach people. And, no. Actually, if God, because God works in us to work through us. It's God's work that He's doing in me that is actually the light that's going to shine. It's got nothing to do with me. It's everything to do with what He's doing. And that becomes the very thing that becomes attractive. I'm not trying to go out there and be attractive. I'm just living the life. She's laughing when I say I'm not trying to go and be attractive. <laughs> You're distracting, eh? <laughs> That's why we do community. That's why we do life groups. I'm asking you, if you're not in a life group that meets every week, please, if you want to build with us, find a life group or we'll start one. Why? Because when I'm serving Jesus by myself, I have my perspective and I'm perfect. As soon as I walk along with other people, suddenly I'm not perfect. Or they're always the problem. And that's why we all need it. We are blind to what we can't see. If you think you can do Jesus without other people, I'm telling you, you're sincerely wrong. You can't. Find a way where you can build community. The only way we hone our doctrine is by debating with others. And other people live what you say you believe, and then they watch and they say, oh, but you said this, but now you're living like this. If you don't have people in, the, in your life who, are, who are, are that to you, then get them. Because it's the life of God transforming you. We are being conformed into the image of Christ. We are being changed into who He is. We are, we are becoming like Him. And if that's not visible, then get into the environment that's going to make that happen. Please. Little by little. And so come and build alongside us little by little. Another point. Husbands and wives... Living the call of God together. So some of the values we believe in. These are some of the building blocks that you can build with us. We don't believe in, I'm called to be a pastor, and Lee's going to live her own life. She's just going to do her own thing. We don't believe in that. We believe in, if I'm called to this, and she's called to some stuff that I'm not called to, we're going to do it together. I'm going to back her and she's going to back me. Together. That's covenant. Because if we can't get it right in our own homes, then what are we showing the world? 
We've got to get it right. We've got to serve God together. And it goes on to families and it goes on beyond that. But it, the first thing is, is here. And if you're not married, it's fine. And I, I hope this is not irrelevant. I hope it's setting you up if you're still going to get married. And if, you, and if you're married and it didn't work out, I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm not, I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying if you're called and you're married or, you, and you, or you've got a family, serve God together. It's important because families are important. Just by building every day, just, just by me building this relationship every day and making it a priority, it's more spiritual warfare than most people will ever do. Because people watch this and they're like, oh my word, these people have gone through stuff, but look, they still love each other. Look at them. We are married 30 years and I'm absolutely in love with her. Probably love her more than I did in the beginning. And that's not because I'm special. Because I'm, I promise you I'm not. <laughs> eh? She says I'm special. <laughs> I don't really believe her. <laughs> my point is, my point is this, and for you, whoever that is, whatever that looks like, it is so important. It is so important. Our ideas of what marriage is, is so important for the next generation. And so, all of us can build community. Because this is building community. This is one of the building blocks of community. All of us can be part of that. In your, in your family, you have siblings, you have parents, you have children. Build community. It's powerful. It's a weapon. And it's easy. And that's what I'm inviting. I'm saying, come build with us. God's word has ways of healing. All of us are messed up. Everyone, I, I, came from a, I came from a Christian home with wonderful parents and a pastor dad who loved me. And I'm messed up. Just so that if anyone thinks, you, you know, you don't know, me, you don't know, you don't know my, my life, you don't, you don't know my dad, my parents, my whatever. That's irrelevant. It's only relevant if God is not God. Because you're given a new identity. And yes, there's some unwinding of our past and sin's effects on us. That's a journey, yes. But God, God has brought us into a whole new family. I don't care how bad it was. God. God is making a new family and it's you and I. And we've got to. Have faith for that. If we don't have faith for your own journey, oh my word, have we got a hope for anyone else? The really broken. I mean, we okay. <laughs> Number three, community of priests. Peter 1, 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. We are a community of priests called... Every single one of us called to play a role. The world's way of building community is have strict rules, external governing. All right? So put rules in place so community works. All right? God's way of building community is an atmosphere of grace, love, faith, and truth. If you get those four things right, you will be a great community, whether it's family, home, workplace, whatever. Our country needs us to get this thing right. We need to be a shining light of community that works. If you look around in the room, there's all types of people. Some people that look like you and some people that don't look like you. That's not normal in our country. It's not normal. I want you to get faith for cross-cultural, cross-race, and cross-age interaction. I'm asking you to get faith for it. It's in the Bible. It's how things will be. It's how it's going to be in the end of the story. All nations, every tongue, every tribe, Revelation 5 and 6. 
It's, it's there. And so I'm asking you to get faith for it. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. Those people who don't look like you, I know they're funny. And I know their hair's funny. Okay, it wasn't a good joke. I was trying to be funny, I'm sorry. I was talking about white people. I'm asking you, get faith. Come and build with us. It starts with a conversation. It starts with a meal. It starts with being with other people. Getting to... That's just a small part of the community because there's all kinds of stuff that we have to cross the line for. And God has called us to be a community of priests. A community of priests. What do priests do? They perform a function. They are intermediaries. They serve the greater community. There was a whole tribe, the, the, the Levite tribe, one of the, one of the twelve tribes. Their job was to serve the rest of the tribes. In fact, they, they forewent having business and land and all those kind of things so that they could serve. Right? And they were supported by all those people who were in business and had farms and had land. They were supported by them. They were looked after so they could serve back. I encourage you to build. I said, the world's way is external motivators. So they motivate you externally. In other words, if you, if you go too fast, you go across the speed limit, you're going to get fined. They motivate you in external ways. God's way is to have internal motivators. Grace. When you are grateful and you have received grace, it flows from you to others. So if you're struggling with that, go back to the one who gave you grace and just focus a little bit on receiving grace and just do a little bit of accounting of how much grace you got. And then normally it's enough. I know other people are worse than you, but generally, if you... Yeah, there was also a joke. <laughs> Love. Yeah, she says I must... I must stop that. (laughs) Love is an internal motivator. We are forever going to be managing our desires. What we want. That's forever going to be a thing. You have control over what you allow yourself to want. I've preached lots of messages on that. You You can manage your desires. You can find yourself desiring something you shouldn't and then you can shift yourself to manage and you can desire things that you don't really want but then you end up wanting them. It's a thing. It's in the Bible. (laughs) Faith. Get convictions about what you do. If you're doing something, get a conviction. You need faith for the things you do, whether it's serving here or your, or your job. Truth. Live from truth, but also live out every, every bit of truth that you own, that, you, that, you, that has become yours. Right, in closing, Matthew seven twenty four to 27. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall, because it was founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them, is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell, and great was its fall. You see, God, Jesus is building His church, but He's doing it with you and I. And what is the church? You and I. So Jesus is forming you and shaping you, us. You can't be the church on your own. Jesus is building the church. The church is the assembly of the believers. It's the corporate. And so Jesus is building, the, building His church, and He's a great foundation. We're building on Jesus the rock. 
But when it comes to us, we have to look at God's Word and hear what He says to us and do what He's told us. So our first response, my, first re- my first request for a response this morning is, if God's spoken to you today, raise your hand. Okay, you can put it down. Secondly, I'm inviting you to come and build with us. There's a whole company of river lifers here who are well on the way of living like this. And I'm inviting everyone in the room to come and build with us. If you challenge this morning, if you want to be part of transforming our city, transforming our neighborhoods, then I'm asking you to stand and I want to pray for us. That God will give us everything we need. Keep us full of passion, full of fire to do everything we can. It's the simple one brick at a time. That's what I'm asking for. I'm saying literally one brick at a time. One conversation, but intentionally build. Build community. Build relationships. Father, thank you that you have called every person to make significant impact in their world. But we don't have to try and make an effort and do it. We just have to align with you and your word and your ways. And you're going to transform us. You're going to keep our hearts stirred for other people. You're going to give us a love and a passion for people. You're going to help us one brick at a time. Be a people who are built together. Thank you for the things you've called us to be. Called us to be a community. You've called us to be an army. You've called us to be a hospital. You've called us to be a great tree. To give shade to many, fruitfulness and healing to many. We say, yes Lord, your kingdom come. Thank you for this wonderful body, River Life Church, that you have blessed us to be part of. Help us come together, find one another, function well, so that we can glorify you. Because, like we sang earlier, you are worthy. You are worthy for us to do everything in our power to glorify your name. And we give you honor and glory. Amen. 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 Amen.